Find the absolute extrema of a function. It's very similar to finding the relative extrema, which we explored in another video. The only difference between those types of problems and how you'll know when to choose one or the other is that an absolute extrema problem, they'll give you a function and ask you to find the absolute max or min or all absolute extrema on a specific interval. So that's very important. So you're going to have f of x on some interval, let's say, a to b. So that changes the problem slightly. So here's a, a graphical example. So say we had a function like this, some sort of cubic function, and we were asked for local mins and maxes. Well, from the graph you can tell you have a local max here and you have a local min here. But say I were to cut the function off at that dotted line and at that dotted line. Now I'm ending here and here, you can see that this local max is not the absolute max because it's not the highest point on the function. Now that I've cut the function, I have a highest point right here. And I also have a new lowest point right here. But if I had the function as is without those cuts, there was no highest point because it kept getting higher and there was no lowest point. So the local maxes and local mins could be absolute maxes and mins, but they don't necessarily have to be in this example. So when we're trying to find the absolute extrema, we not only want to find the local extrema, but we want to check the endpoints of our A to B interval. So the process at first is the same as finding the relative extrema. You want to take the derivative, set it equals to zero, or undefined, remember, it must be on the domain. Now, remember, we're only on A to B, so the only x's we're concerned about are in A to B for our derivative being zero and undefined. So we find our critical numbers that are inside the interval, and all we need to do is check them versus the endpoints and see what's the highest and what's the lowest. So for this, when you're doing the absolute extrema, you don't have to do a number line. You can just try the points themselves. So we got to try the, the left endpoint, which we call A. So we do f of A, we see what that is. We do all the critical numbers, f of C1, f of C2, however many critical numbers you have. And we have to try the last endpoint, f of B. So those are all of our possible candidates for something being the absolute max or the absolute min. So then all you need to do is see out of this list what was the highest and what was the lowest. Whatever gave you the highest value, that's your absolute max. Whatever gave you the lowest value, that would be your absolute min. So absolute extrema is a very similar concept to relative extrema, except you don't have to draw a number line. And you have to be careful that your critical numbers that you check were in the interval and that you check the endpoints of the interval as well.